Well, our unusually humid spring has caused our normally disease-resistant roses to start showing signs of disease. And these roses have powdery mildew, and powdery mildew is pretty much like the name says. It's powdery substance on the leaf, and it is a fungal disease. And you can see here that we've got quite a bit of powdery mildew. Now, it not only can affect the leaves, but can also affect the stems and the buds. And sometimes, if it's a very bad infection, the buds won't go ahead and open on your roses. Also, you can notice that the leaves start to curl and crinkle, and this is another symptom of the disease. And if you look at this plant overall, it looks like it's kind of dry, but it's actually the powdery mildew. Now, because we've had such a humid spring, that's one of the reasons why we're having problems with powdery mildew. And also, these plants are in an area where they don't get good air circulation, which is another tip if you're putting roses in to site them in a place where they get good air circulation all around the rose. Now, another fungal disease that may be affecting your roses because it is quite prevalent this spring is black spot. And again, as the name implies, there's a black spot on the leaf or kind of brown, and it usually is surrounded by a yellow halo. Now, black spot can actually defoliate a rose bush and in very severe cases can kill the rose, basically because without foliage, the rose cannot photosynthesize. Now, there, there are several fungicides on the market that you can spray for both powdery mildew and for black spot. And these include Funginex, Immunex, and lime sulfur spray. Now be sure to read the label. And in the case of lime sulfur spray, you'll want to watch the temperature at which you apply it because at high temperatures, lime sulfur spray can actually burn the foliage. So you won't be doing the plant any good. Another thing to think about is just to locate your plants in an area with very good air circulation and choose disease-resistant varieties of roses. Well, since we've been talking about spraying roses, part of good pesticide application is to properly dispose of those containers once they're empty. Now, when you empty your pesticide container, you'll need to triple rinse it and empty that rinseate into the sprayer. Then save those containers and take them to a pesticide recycling container drop-off point. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.